aka Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome back to our Saturday video series, being our upgrade and commander build video series, where today we'll be featuring the tier 10 premium heavy cruiser, the Napoli. And I have a Friday highlight of this ship. I'll tag it at the end of this video. It was a fantastic battle that we had. It was a dream matchmaking, um, and I think really just showed off the strengths of this ship when you don't have to deal with submarines and CVs. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So let's just uh, crack right into it. So what type of cruiser is the Napoli? Well, Napoli is a brawling cruiser. Um, also in particular because she's got this fun thing uh, being at torpedoes that have decent firing angles. Uh, it has, it's two by four, so you get two sets, um, one on each side. 13.5 uh, kilometer, 56 knots. Um, detectability range is 1.1 and they reload every 95 seconds, so just a minute and a half. So that's uh, not too bad. Also, the other thing that keeps uh, the brawling in terms of this going quite well would be the armor layout scheme, which we'll talk a little bit more about, and her concealment. When you build max concealment on Napoli, you can get to 10.3 kilometers. So that's really nice, um, as you saw demonstrated in yesterday's video. And she also has this exhaust smoke generator, so again, kind of this medium range. Um, so when I say medium range, like for Napoli, I would say like that's like 10, 15 kilometers. Um, Cause your artillery, you have 16.3 main battery firing range when you don't build into range in the sixth slot, um, as I just built for reload. Um, so I really like playing around, to be honest, like that 10 to 12 kilometer um, and slightly less because of her secondaries. So you have a 9.2 kilometer secondaries uh, that reload uh, the 152s reload every 6.8, the 90s reload every uh, 3 seconds. Um, so you can get uh, some secondary action going on with the Napoli. So she's uh, quite a tanky cruiser overall. So I'm going to say it's... Let me readjust <laughs> the range I think you should play Napoli in. Uh, you should play Napoli um, in within the secondary range. Only brawling when possible. Uh, you pick out those engagements wisely. Um, otherwise, you know, you're playing that 10 to 15 kilometer window. Let's just give that as an example with these 254 millimeter guns. Now, in terms of the armor scheme, the bow and the stern is 25 millimeter. And we're going to talk about the stern here in just a minute. Um, you have a 60 millimeter icebreaker on the bow and then on the rear. You have a little patch, this uh, 60 millimeter right here. So uh, more tanky, I would say. Uh, pushing in rather than uh, the other way around and I'm going to talk about as if you saw yesterday's video You're gonna know what I'm gonna be talking about uh, with the stern here in just a minute um, But we take that away. We're gonna look at the uh, Armor belt 60 millimeter on top with 2 and 20 millimeter on the side Which means you're able to bounce um, a lot of things if angled properly You can see it's kind of this sort of turtleback armor scheme going on um, when we're looking down here, right? We take that away. Then you see the citadel, and the top of the citadel is actually slanted upwards um, to work with that um, turtleback uh, armor scheme. So uh, you can take citadels, you know, if you get the shell, it comes at the right angle and punches down and through. Um, I had not been, um, I'm trying to remember. I don't know if I've actually been citadeled in the Napoli yet. She's rather difficult to citadel, even though the citadel is above waterline, um, but just due to how her armor scheme works. Now, talking about the um, stern armor, I think yesterday you guys saw, I took, I think it was like 23,000 damage from one Montana volley uh, from the 406s in the rear. And I think a large part of that has to do with this uh, step up uh, that you have here. So it's just this flat surface so if I pull it back up, right? So you have just the 25 millimeter and then you have this 30 millimeter and then, you know, right into um, all the back here. So I think Napoli is a bit weak in terms of um, if a battleship player exposes this weakness on your ship and they're aiming for that specifically when you're kiting away detected, uh, you know, basically you're running your shells to land just beneath the turret. Um, so you can get massively chunked there uh, because you're just not going to be able to balance and angle it like you would being bow on. Um, with that being said, last thing to make mention of with her armor scheme is the guns. 
250 millimeter in the front, 125 to 100, and the very back is 120, top 100, 150. So basically the forward part of the turrets are the strongest, and then of course your um, barbet uh, armor is 220 millimeter. So just be notice, uh, be wise. I've had my turrets knocked out, uh, I think once or twice of the games I've played so far with Napoli. Um, if they're relatively weak from the side, um, so you just have to be a little bit mindful of that if a player is wise enough into trying to knock out your turrets if you're focusing on some other target. Module wise, uh, so these are 254 millimeter guns. Um, with the reload time I have right now, it's 15 seconds. Um, the 180 degree turn time is 25.7 seconds. Your HE shell damage is 3,450. The maximum AP shell damage is 6,150. So pretty good all in all. In all. It, this is kind of an odd ship in the sense that it doesn't typically you know, have the sap and AP. It's got sap secondaries, but it's got high explosive and armor piercing as its main battery. Um, let's see, with survivability experts, you can push this puppy past 60,000 hit points, 63,700. I can just confirm that I do indeed have that. Um, so that is really strong to have on the Napoli that you're essentially having like kind of like this battleship health, um, battle cruiser health, I would say at um, tier 10. I mean, you compare it to other tier nine, tier eight battleships, right? Um, I think um, Massachusetts is around 66,300. So, you know, you're not that far off. So you have a, you can have a relatively large health pool to build into um, in between, you know, your armor, your secondaries, torpedoes, and kind of okay AA. The A will do okay against tier eights, but it's not great against tier 10 CVs and super CVs. Torpedoes, reload time, 95 seconds. So that's pretty nice. Torpedo range, 13.5 kilometers. Torpedo damage, 13,900. Same as Venezia. Torpedo speed, 56 knots. And their two by four exposed rack on the stern of the ship. Your gunfire control system is 16.3 with your main battery firing range. Um, so this isn't a sniper cruiser by any means. Um, it's meant to play mid-range and brawl. Um, that is how the ship is designed. Propulsion, 240,000 horsepower, 36 knots. With the Sierra Mike flag, you will be pushing uh, 37 knots, and it's probably 37 point something. Uh, the game just doesn't take that into account. So you're a very fast, heavy cruiser in the game. Um, so it's really fun, um, the plays you're able to make with the ship. Not in terms of the upgrades for the slot one, I would recommend taking the main arm as modification one. This is gonna reduce the risk of your main battery and torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. Main battery survivability, torpedo tube survivability is improved by plus 50%, but uh, with how Wargaming does it, your torpedo tube survivability or hit point pull is pretty much up to RNG, which uh, is bad. Uh, main battery torpedo tube repair time if either of these armaments should be knocked out. Uh, reduced pre repair time, negative 20%. So that's definitely really nice to build into, especially if you're going to brawl, um, you're going to do a drive on battleship cruiser. You know, you want your guns working for you, you want your torpedoes, especially since that's kind of your trump card uh, in the brawling engagements. Um, I don't really recommend auxiliary armaments modification one. Really, you take this just to build into your secondary battery survivability. But um, it just depends on the type of engagements you're going to have. You're not always going to get use of your secondaries. Um, hopefully, most of the time you will, but that's just not the case when you're playing high tier um, random matchmaking um, in ranked in World Warships. Maybe more ranked brawling opportunities, not always so much in randoms. Magazine modification one, which reduces the risk of a ship's magazine detonating by negative seventy percent. Just take the Juliet Charlie combat signal if you're playing randoms, ranked clan battles. Um, you don't need it for co-op. Um, I've not seen a ship detonate in convoy, so I don't know if that's a thing as we have convoy battle mode right now. Damage control party modification one. This extends the action time of your DCP by plus forty percent. Um, so it's five seconds. So basically, I'd bring you up to nine seconds. No, <laughs> no that's, that's too much, uh, like seven seconds. Yeah, um, if I'm doing math right in my head. Um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> uh, the other thing we've done here in the second slot, I am still kind of back and forth a little bit about this. Um, 
The first is damage control system modification one. This reduces risk of catching fire, risk of flooding, uh, negative five, negative three percent. Because Napoli is a cruiser, I've um, elected to go for the engine room protection um, because she's a little bit different from the example like of Stalingrad or Moskva, where you know you're going to be playing those more at range. Where Napoli is kind of this this medium range to close range brawler. And so, you know, reducing the risk of your engine, your steering gears becoming capacitated, I feel like it's kind of important, especially with Napoli's role. So that's why I've gone for engine protection. Um, and then if they get knocked out, you know, your repair time is reduced by negative 20%. So for myself, this is what I've been comfortable with taking so far in the second slot on Napoli. Now, um, if you're going for what Napoli's, the, you know, kind of the gimmick with her secondaries, uh, you're gonna be wanting to pick up the secondary battery modification one. Secondary battery firing range plus 20%, uh, maximum secondary battery shell dispersion negative 20%, meaning tighter vertical and horizontal dispersion. So without the combat signal right now, our secondaries go 8.8 uh, with that. And then you take the Mike Yankee Soka 6, however you say that, uh, that's what bumps you out to the 9.2 kilometer. Um, also that it gives you, it enhances your reload time too. So actually if I take that back off, 3.2, 7.2, three seconds, 6.8 seconds, um, as well as you getting an even tighter negative 5% shell dispersion vertically and horizontally. So basically negative 25% in total um, of your um, secondary battery shell dispersion and plus 25% in terms of range uh, for your secondaries. So that's what I've liked running. Um, you, I think we did like 97 secondary hits in yesterday's highlight reel um, or video. Um, so you can check that out. Um, you know, your main battery is already pretty nice at being 25.7 seconds. I've not been like, oh, I wish they rotated faster. So I've not felt like I've wanted the main battery modification too. Um, and then I think also we have grease the gears on our commander. So that's what's helping us out here and making that difference up. Um, and then otherwise, oh, what about aiming systems modification one? If I wanna have tighter shell dispersion vertically and horizontally with my main battery guns. Um, and a slight buff to the secondaries. Um, I mean, Napoli's built different. She's meant for this brawling medium um, range roll around that 10 to 12 kilometers. So for me, I'm like, I have other cruisers where I normally do the aiming systems modification one on. Napoli's built different, um, where you can build into her secondaries. So that's what I would recommend um, as a whole uh, for you to do with Napoli, because you have different ships in the game and you can build them and spec them differently. Um, so I would recommend going for the secondary battery modification one for the reasons I have explained. In the fourth slot, we've gone for pul pul propulsion modification one. Time taken to reach full engine power when accelerating, negative 50%. This has helped me a lot, especially when I've, I've had a couple of games and I've had to deal with uh, submarines, trying to avoid um, their torpedoes by speed juking, cutting my throttle when the torpedoes get close enough and hopefully dodging. Um, also, um, you know, when you find yourself torpedoes incoming in your kind of this mid range to brawling range, it helps having the propulsion if you need to pick up some speed, get out of the way, um, all those type of things. And you also saw me demonstrating the propulsion yesterday when we would cut our throttle, um, when we had an Ohio and some other ships in Annapolis shooting at us. Um, and we already take, I think, like 600,000 potential damage at the very beginning of the battle and only take like maybe five or six K damage total. So I recommend propulsion, modification one. Um, steering gears, I feel comfortable with steering gears already. Um, it's a rudder shift, 12.5 uh, seconds, turning circle radius, 750 meters. Um, you saw me demonstrate you using it to avoid Yugamo Torps yesterday without having steering gears, modification one. So I feel the need for it. Uh, I feel the same about damage control system modification too. Um, if I want to build a tank, you know, you can build a tank main battery build with Napoli. Okay, I can say that, um, but I think you kind of lose more of the French, uh, sorry, so let's say French Italian nature uh, that this that brawling Napoli cruiser is. And we'll probably talk a little bit more about that as we go along. Fifth slot, just build into the Concealment system modification one, Napoli doesn't do good as a lighthouse in my opinion because it just doesn't have the reload time compared to other ships, uh, high tier cruisers in the game. It's reducing your tech ability range by negative 10% by C, by air negative 10% and plus 5% of dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship. So having 10.3 kilometer 
Um, oh yeah, it's 8.8 .8 after firing main guns into smoke. So it's weird that Venezia's is worse than there are only two and four millimeter guns, or two and three millimeter guns, excuse me. Um, this concealment is a trick. It's, it's fun to build into because you saw what I did to that Annapolis at the beginning of yesterday's video that you, um, it doesn't make sense that I, I feel like for your smoke fire pills to be, be so small with 254 millimeter guns, but you know, it's wargaming, tweaking, balancing things, and it makes Napoli a little bit more funner in my opinion. The six slot, I do recommend going for the main battery modification three. This is reducing your main battery reload time by negative 12%. Main battery traverse speed, negative 13%, meaning it's a nerf to your 180 degree turret traverse time. Uh, so that's giving us that 15 second uh, reload. I think otherwise it's closer to like 17 or 16 something seconds. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so that's nice. And you saw us activate Confederate yesterday with Luigi Sansonetti as one of his talents. So we were giving even faster reload. I think it was around 12 or 11 seconds also at the drill and rush ticking meaning that we're increasing our damage output um, at the brawling close range. Now, other people might be like, but Flimsy, I want to build into range into Napoli. And I would kind of ask you why. Why do you want to build into range for Napoli when she's built as this medium range to uh, close quarter brawling cruiser? You know, if you, you know, Napoli's for coal. If you want to build into range or something, you know, um, which I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but you know, for example, you've got Moskva, um, you've got Salem, and but I still recommend reload on both of those. But there's other ships that are just, uh, they can do maybe a little bit better with the range mod than I would say uh, upgrade that the Napoli would. Um, Cause you're, I don't know, kind of killing the fun. This is supposed to be a fun ship, um, get in brawl. The other thing, um, if we went full secondaries, we would take this um, six, slots auxiliary armaments modification two this reduces your secondary battery reload time by negative 20 percent and gives you a buff to your aa now unfortunately the napoli aa is crap <laughs> it's 73 you know you could take a, a combat signal to bump it up to 74 um, but it's just bad um, let me pick on this for a moment um, so i'm gonna get down to here to the continuous damage your max range your long range AA is 4.6 kilometers. So by the time your AA decides to start firing, CV slowing 4.4, 4.3 kilometers before they even start firing, right? Um, and the damage by the long range is 102. Your medium range is 305 uh, damage. Uh, firing range 3.5, and then close short range is two kilometer, 130 damage. So this is not an AA cruiser by any means or any stretch of the imagination. The AA sucks. That's why you get they give you fighters, basically. Um, so really, you're only taking this skill for the secondaries, right? Um, so if I was to look at um, three seconds, uh, you'd be shaving off two, uh, six, 0 0.6 seconds, meaning you're getting down to 2.4 uh, seconds here with the 90 millimeter. Um, and then with the 152 millimeter, you would be getting down to, you'd be basically almost shaving 1.4 seconds off. Uh, so that would mean 5.4, 5.5 second uh, rough uh, reload time uh, with the secondaries, the, the, the 152 millimeters. So that is a possibility if you're really invested in that. I, I think it's, it's worth trying out. I've not tried it out yet. I probably should just to get my, uh, my wrap my mind around it more. But I've just I'm not always within secondary range of the ships, so that's why I've leaned towards the main battery modification three. <sighs> that being said, moving on swiftly, high explosive shells. You got sixteen percent chance of starting fires on a target. Of course, you could bump that up with combat signals to eighteen percent. Um, three thousand four hundred fifty. So they're really it's just to deal. You know, you're trying to start a fire maybe on a target that's angled away. Maybe it's. Um, uh, Russian uh, ship, Russian battleship, Russian cruiser, or it's a destroyer you want to use HE on. That's kind of only use I've seen the high explosive on, or submarines for that matter. Um, most of the time I'm firing the armor piercing. So this has a 6,150 6, maximum damage with the shell. Uh, you saw us clap the Ohio yesterday with these guns in combination with our torpedoes simultaneously, uh, as that was rather amusing uh, to watch. 
Your torpedoes, one of the things I didn't mention is your detectability range is 1.1 kilometers. Uh, so they're not they're not bad in terms of detectability like the Yodo um, Takahashi. Um, and there are stealthier torpedoes. The deep water torpedoes are definitely underneath one kilometer. So they're okay, but you know, if you're pushing up and you're brawling a target and you're just dumping into the side, you know, there's not really any way they're going to be able to avoid it. Your depth charge airstrike, you get two uh, flights, uh, two charges, only one aircraft in an attacking flight. 2,000 uh, hit points is what the aircraft has, and it's eight kilometers. And the one aircraft drops two bombs in payloads. Basically, if you use them back to back, you get four bombs per, uh, in the payload as a whole. Uh, maximum bomb damage, 4,900, uh, with a reload time of 30 seconds. Consumables, damage control party, standard for a cruiser, five second action time, 60 second cooldown time. You have unlimited number of charges. Your repair party is plus 318. With the India Delta combat signal, we can bump that up to 382, which I do recommend doing playing ranked randoms or clan battles action time 20 seconds cooldown time 80 seconds and currently we have four of these fighters you don't get options for spot or anything like that you get four uh fighters in total action time 60 seconds this is really for surveillance and recon so when you smoke up with your exhaust smoke generator which we're going to be talking about here in a moment it gives you a lot of valuable information or you're trying to spot that enemy ship that's over behind the island. You saw me illustrate this multiple times in yesterday's video. So it is fun. It's actually nice to have this in my opinion. So I'm glad that they did give fighters to the Napoli as it really helps um, strengthen the ship more and giving you information. Now, the exhaust smoke generator. Right now, the action time is 40 seconds. If we take the combat signal, um, X-ray, Papa, you know, one, I think they're going to be nerfing this to plus 10%. Right now it's plus 15%, which meaning 46 seconds. Another thing that they're going to be doing with the, um, they're going to let, allow you access to the smoke uh, special upgrade, the smoke in slot three on all Italian ships. Um, and I think those add a plus 20% on the action time of the smoke screen. Um, I'm going to have to look. Third slot. Third slot for MC. Uh, plus 30%, but I think they are nerfing it. They're going to get rid of the negative 5% smoke screen dispersion time, and I think they're, they're lessen it to plus 20%, uh, if my memory serves correctly. And that's an update 12.5. This is update 12.4. So going for a smoke build on Annapolis, just as I talked about with Venezia last week, is very possible. Um, so then that might, uh, you know, that would mean giving up secondaries, though. So that's a bit of a tough one, if I'm being completely honest. If I, I don't think I would want, I maybe not want to give up my secondary battery um, because this is fun uh, to have. So that's, that's going to be a bit rough. Or Venezia it is a really clear winner uh, for the third slot. And uh, granted, you know, it's aiming systems there. But so we just have to see that. But you can build a longer duration time on a smoke Napoli as an example. And we're going to talk about that with the commander build here in just a moment. But um, the smoke screen dispersion time is 10 seconds. So basically after you've, your action time is 46 seconds, but if you stay in your last puff of smoke, basically you have a 56 second uh, duration on your um, smoke screen with all those things um, combined there. Uh, action radius, half kilometer, cooldown time, 180 seconds. Uh, we can take the November Foxtrot, which is gonna reduce that by negative 5%, 271 seconds. And that also does affect your fighter. Um, you can see it at that drop down from, oops, wrong one. That was 90, right? Yeah, 90, and then your heal, you know, 80 seconds, now it drops down to, should be 76, yeah. Um, and you get three of these in total, okay? Um, beyond that, other things I recommend for your commander, um, probably, uh, I would recommend this setup here. Um, granted, you're not reducing the flooding time, but usually, you know, fires you're dealing with on a regular basis. So this is what I recommend with your combat signals. Now, Luigi Sansonetti, how do you get him? He comes from uh, containers, which you can acquire in the armory. You buy enough of them and you complete a collection. Then you get Luigi Sansonetti. He's got three talents. He's got the rapid fire talent, activates upon earning the Confederate achievement. Um, oh my gosh, I lied in my video yesterday. I said negative 8%, it's negative 15%. Or I think um, there's a, Halsey has a even a better, reduction in his main pad reload time. So I think I mixed myself up there. 
Uh, so it's negative 15 percent i think in the video i said negative eight percent so apologies i will make errors sometimes during these videos um i'll have to comment on the video uh far reach talent activates once per battle upon destroying an enemy ship plus eight percent this is what i was thinking of okay i got confused so it extends your main battery firing range by plus eight percent um once you've destroyed an enemy ship um so that's nice um and that does help you if you do need to get that additional range on your main battery guns from 16.3 to Something closer uh, to, yeah, it'd be 18 kilometers um, then. So actually, you'll see this in yesterday's footage, uh, what the range eventually goes out to. And then if you've hit an enemy ship 100 times with your main battery shells, you get a plus 10% on your consumable action time. So it means my uh, DCP is going longer, my repair party, my fighters, um, my exhaust smoke generator. So really fun to have him on Napoli, and because Napoli is a premium ship, it's free to move him um, him on Nap Nap Napoli into Venezia back and forth because it's trained for. I have Luigi Cincinnati trained for Venezia. Okay. Ugh. With that being said, um, this build video isn't going to be as complicated as Vet Venezia, so let me uh, get through this swiftly. So I have Luigi Cincinnati built favored for going for a Venezia build. Okay, um, so you're gonna see that with the eye in the sky because you don't get spotter plane with uh, Napoli. So this is a two point wasted skill essentially here on the Napoli. And I will talk about a different skill I'd recommend taking here in the two point slot. But with the first point, I would recommend doing boost to gears, main battery traverse speed plus 15%. And then when you have a three point commander, there's a few options you could look at. If you kind of feel like you need help with your map awareness, um, I would say take priority target if you have a little bit of struggle with that. Um, it basically shows how many enemy ships are targeting your ship uh, with their main battery guns. Or if it destroys uh, flipping between torpedoes and his main battery guns, you'll see like one, zero, one, zero. So then you got an idea you're being torped, so then you need to cut your speed, you need to maneuver, however that may be. Probably what I recommend most is to actually pick up the consumables enhancements. Because um, it's just going to extend your action time of your smoke generator by plus 10%. Um, I think that's kind of the clear winner here um, in terms of the, the three-point slot, uh, three-point commander build. If you're uh, comfortable and you feel like you have an adequate uh, awareness, map awareness, then I would say go for this because, you know, having your a longer lasting smoke means maybe it's more time for you to get your next heal off before you go into um, enemy fire, right? So it's kind of the survivability defensive, but you can use it in offensive capability as well. Uh, for a six point commander, um, would I say Adrenaline Rush first or would I say Superintendent first? Probably I would say Superintendent first just to go from the two smokes to the three smokes, from the three fighters to the four fighters, from the three repair parties to the four repair parties. Um, that, because of your brawling capacity, means you're going to probably be taking punishment quite frequently. So having that extra smoke, having that extra repair party is quite favorable in my opinion. And then for a 10 point um, commander build, I would say pick up Concealment Expert, um, thus giving you that 10.3 by sea, 7.9 by air and depths. Um, after this, a 13 point build, I would go for Adrenaline Rush. Um, this reduces your main battery reload time, your torpedo reload time, your secondary battery reload time, and it gives a slight buff to your AA, but that's not really, you take this, you take it for the main battery, torpedoes, and secondary battery. Um, so that's why you're seeing that even better reload time ahead with Napoli once I have activated Confederate uh, with uh, Luigi Cincinnati in yesterday's video. For a 16 point build, then I would say pick up Survivability Expert. Uh, HP increase for each ship tier plus 450. So this is what takes us beyond 60,000 to 63,700. I don't remember right now off the top of my head what it is without Survivability Expert. But just having that more robust health pool uh, for Napoli being the sprawler is really nice in my opinion. So that's a 16 point build, imagining this one's on here. And then uh, for a 20 point build, I would say then pick up the top grade gunner. Uh, this increases uh, your, uh, well, it reduces your secondary battery reload time by negative 10%. Uh, so that means we're gonna be able to get our secondaries down to 2.7 seconds and 6.2 seconds. Pretty nice, especially if you think about um, the six slot uh, upgrade we talked about, uh, being the auxiliary armor modification too. 
So a negative 20% stacked on top of a um, negative 10%. Um, so you can definitely get secondaries firing quite fast here on um, um, the Napoli, but it's you have a can be activated skill, which is more of what's on my mind per se with the Napoli, um, is that your main battle reload time is reduced by negative 8%. Whenever your ship is uh, detected within this, its standard detectability range, so that means 10.3, doesn't take into account fires or uh, gun bloom, that type of thing. It's your standard detectability range of 10.3. Um, and you saw that we were doing a good amount of work um, towards the end of the battle yesterday, um, the last two thirds, uh, the last third of the battle, I guess, um, in the center cap, where we were getting used from these guns uh, quite a lot. So I would say definitely go for this. And also it's really nice that it builds into the secondaries and this is a secondary cruiser. So that just makes this skill so much more sweeter versus you know when you're building into something like a, a, a Salem or a Stalingrad that doesn't really have secondaries going for it. Uh, where here you're gonna get a clear benefit from this skill here on Napoli. And then for your last one point skill, there's a few options you could do. Um, I don't know if you necessarily want to have the faster torpedoes. Um, you could have the incoming fire alerts and not having priority target. That's good, really good alternative to get that longer smoke duration time. Um, so it gives you a warning when a salvo is taken at your ship from a distance more than 4.5 kilometers away. You could have the improved gun feeder. So then your shell switching time is going to be reduced to 6 seconds versus 15 seconds. So if you're running up on a destroyer and you just want to switch from your AP to your high explosive, uh, or deal with a submarine, that's really nice um, as well. Um, and then you've got the last stand. I've not had, if I remember correctly, my engine or steering gear is knocked out yet. Um, but if you take this, your ship remains partially able to sustain speed maneuverability when the engines and steering gears are incapacitated. Myself, um, I'm tempted to take this um, and then not eye in the sky, but consumable enhancements uh, here on Napoli with uh, Luigi Sansonetti and I'll probably we'll have to see um, I think this is a really good overall build for Napoli that I favor quite a lot um, with consumables enhancements um, you know you could have faster reloading torpedoes um, this would drop you down uh, so you go from 95 seconds to 85.5 seconds so there is something there but you know uh, I feel like for myself, this is something you're definitely going to get benefit uh, use from. Uh, so this gun feeder or incoming fire alert. So really use that last one point how you feel best. Um, I think these two are the top picks and what's remaining in my mind of what you would want to have. So with that being said, um, if there's a skill you have questions about that I didn't cover, please let me know. As I don't, I'd really try not to drag these videos out longer than 30 minutes. I do my best to cap it. Um, but I've had a lot of fun in this ship, and I just wanted to give you my in-depth thoughts uh, about the Napoli with the commander build and upgrades, so on and so forth. So, if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you did not, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you are subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.